Artist Heather Hudson first debuted in 1994 in the Legend set and has since become a legend in her own right. She was one of the few female artists who worked on magic in its formative years. And even though she has not contributed new art since Eventide in 2008, she is one of the most reprinted artists in the game today. It's highly unlikely to not have stumbled on a lonely sandbar, secluded step, or a barren moor during gameplay. I love a good barren moor. Innistrad has dozens of them, including the Great Stensia Barren Moor. It's a huge tourist attraction on account it's a prime location for a Gitrog monster sighting. I cannot tell you how many times I have seen Giddy swallow an unwilling human sacrifice who thought they were being led to the moors for, I don't know, the world's most dangerous version of Capture the Flag? And mind you, the sacrifices have to be adults. Giddy won't surface for anything under 90 pounds, and if you ask me, you have to be a special kind of stupid to willingly go into an area that has an active giant man-eating frog lurking about. But I digress. How did I even get started on this rant? I totally don't remember how I got started on this rant. Baron Moore? Oh yes. I swear, my attention deficit disorders reach a point where I feel like, I don't know how to explain it. Oh, it's not important. But what is important is that we get to today's interview with Heather Hudson. Enjoy. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. No problems. And it's nice to meet you out there. Now, I, I, I heard that you started out now as an English student and that you also did costume design and that art was really sort of something you kind of just were, you did it as a hobby and then it got noticed. How, how did that, uh, how did that happen? Um, well, right after I got my M MFA in theatrical design, life kind of stopped, life kind of fell apart and I wound up renting a room and looking for a new day job and doing art in my spare time. And at that point, I was volunteering at a small comic book company called Moo Press, um, which is probably probably remembered today for publishing Donna Barr's The Desert Peach, which, which, which was a beautifully drawn comic. I, I, I really loved Donna's work. Mm -hmm. But at the time I was volunteering in the evenings and um, because I was hanging out with that crowd, uh, I was invited to come to the social events that would would uh, happen in my community in Seattle with a lot of other artists and comic book artists and writers. And we'd play poker for nickels and hang out and uh, somebody would bring chili and we would just sustain each other because that's how artists get by when things are hard. Right. Uh, your friends help you and you help them and everyone plays poker for nickels. Um, but it was cool for all of us struggling art slackers to bring what we were working on and talk about it. And uh, I was bringing my, my paintings at that point and a couple people said, hey, these are pretty good. You should show them to Jesper Mirforce. He's got this game. It's it's debuting or it just debuted at PAX and it made a big fuss and he's looking for artists. Right? Okay. Um, I did not have a polished professional background in art. I'd always drawn. I had done some drawing as part of my MFA design program. Um, but basically I, I hung out with some of my friends in the local fantasy slash geek community and practice painting and got instruction from other painters in that niche community. And um, so I've been faking it and studying on my own ever since. Um, and sometimes, sometimes it works out. I mean, well, it, I mean, the, if you're faking it, uh, uh, that's very impressive because I will say, I mean, just looking at your artwork through the, the through the ages, it's it's it has gotten 
incredible. I mean, and, and a lot of, a lot of like, I think a lot of the magic early magic artists because of, and I've talked to other artists about this, that the way things were so quickly done back then, there wasn't a chance for people to sort of really get a chance to flex. And it was sort of like, we need this now we need this yesterday and things were very rushed. Now, what was the, I know this, you've been asked this before, but what was the first card that you got to, to do the art for? The first card or cards, uh, I got three cards. They were in Legends and they were Zephyr Falcon, Chains of Mephistopheles and Avengers, some kind of Avenger. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, the Chain of Me Mephistopheles, blah, blah, blah. Mephistopheles, <laughs> I, I can't hear. Mephistopheles, I did it, I yeah. think. Okay, yeah, finally. Yeah. Mm. Close enough. What's that? It, you did you did perfectly fine. James yeah, I fine. I butchered it poorly, and and that's and would you believe in English masters right here? So you know, there's a shocker. It's um, amazing how we go out in the world and do things that are not teaching English. So uh, so yay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because uh, you know, like I could do that, or I could make more money in McDonald's, which is sort of the sad truth. It, it's but, not good to think about that. Roll on. Oh yes. So. That painting's arresting in a sense that I, what did you, you, ins was that inspired by some sort of like older painting? Like, cause it looks like it's rooted in, in a historical painting that of a devil or something like that. It, um, it very much is inspired by a sketch by Albrecht Durer. I believe I've pronounced that right. Um, an engraving called the night death and the devil. And the devil in that painting is just the saddest ass looking devil. It looks like it wants to sell you dirty postcards. <laughs> it has no class. There is no coolness about that devil. And I think that's one of the things I love about it, that it just looks like such a slimy little devil. Right. Um, and my painting is not drawn directly from that devil, but it's very much inspired by that devil. And there are some elements in it that, that worked into it. Um, and it's funny that the needs of magic as a game have evolved to the point where there are certain images which are no longer acceptable. I believe most of the traditional Western devils, hell, Satan has been gently pushed they, aside yeah they've, they've done that yeah they sort of have made it um it's they had they haven't outright banned it but they've just moved the direction to not there ever yeah it's it's because the company needs to be able to sell at places like walmart and that's that's perfectly cool that's how that's how the game gets out to the players if it can be put on the shelves at a big chain store yay more people can get it more cards can be sold more money comes in to make more games. Yay. But it's just funny how how the needs of the game sort of evolve from, from year to year and decade to decade, which is, mm -hmm. I believe, part of the normal order of things. Yeah, but, but I can understand because I'm a newer player. I started in 2019. So mm -hmm. I, I um, but at the same time, I can understand that there is sort of like a little bit of like mourning for the time where there wasn't a lot of watching your P's and Q's, if you will, like people could just do something without any fear of, of, of being misinterpreted. Um, but I guess it's a double-edged sword because then there are some people, you know, that did do things that were just straight up not so cool. And, and then only in hindsight was that understood to be the thing, but, but I can understand it sort of like it makes it a little bit less edgy. Eh, edgy is not all that. You th um, okay. uh, back, oh, I, I can't remember the name of this set, but I did a card called. I have it pulled up. So if you tell me what the card is, I can, I can figure it out. Come, comeback cat, shadow cat. It was a big, big, uh, big sort of a lynx shaped cat attacking an undead skeleton warrior oh what i wanted to say was that at the time that i submitted my sketch and painted the card uh illustration 
there was a certain degree of deadness that was acceptable. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not a terribly gory artist overall. So anyway, I, I had drawn my little undead skeletal <laughs> warrior. He had some skin dried on him. Um, I, was, I was actually going for that uh, Sylvester the Mummy look. If you've ever been to Seattle, down to the old curiosity shop. Oh, there's yeah. There's an old mummy in a glass case. That was kind of what I was going for, that that dried out jerky quality of mummy. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Um, so I painted it and I turned it in and it was accepted. And then he came out and I discovered that the ribs of the skeleton had been kind of smooshed away in Photoshop. And I thought, hmm, I huh. wonder why it was acceptable before. Um, and it was just that apparently at that point, um, Wizards was becoming more active in parts of Asia where dead people get more respect and cranking out a obviously dead guy with his ribs showing was not right for what they needed at this time. So, so it went away. That's, and that's, cool. that's Things a strange, changed. that's a strange thing to, I mean, to that's in the like grand scheme of what, has been, you know, been censored. What is it you would think of as something being censorable? That does not seem like something that would be just, it's not shocking. I, I mean, if anything- Are on the priority list? Yeah, exactly. If anything, now, I mean, I know that you are like, I mean, are you a horror fan? Because I, I get the idea that you don't particularly like horror and you've, your beasts, you describe them as they're amiable. Um, however, You've got some ones in there that are scary. I mean, oh, like, yay, yay, like I, very much so. Occasionally, I try to be scary, but I always think I'm not really as good at it as other as as some of the other artists in that time. I I, I feel like, yeah, I I, but I don't feel that I'm naturally gory or horrifying. Mm -hmm. At least I I don't have. I don't roll with it maybe as well as some other artists. I, I feel like there's a reason I wound up doing a lot of white, blue, and green cards. Um, I mean, but you know, I'll tell you this much. I mean, like for example, like the uh, giant trapdoor spider, I mean, is freaky. I mean, and, yeah. and, and um, the, uh, oh gosh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of it. it it's the, um, the um, mutation. Oh, just, damn it! Damn it! I had it. One of the one of the gooey ones, wasn't? Yeah, it, it was. It was the there's there's instances where your work is in incredibly horrifying. I mean, hey, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think you might be selling yourself short because you actually can can you can roll with the big boys and girls and and it's it's horror i mean it's horror stuff and you've done stuff for lovecraft right you've done lovecraft property i am a big lovecraft fan and i have worked with um the folks at pagan press a couple of times over the last 25 years um and every so often i i i get a chance to do some some um an illustration for someone now uh, that's set in a Lovecraftian or horror-based uh, genre. Um, and I have done the Christmas cards, but I have to say that my Lovecraftian Christmas cards are not really very dark, uh, or at least they aren't, they aren't obviously gory. They, they could be kind of creepy if you think about it, like Amigo with a canister and the canister's wearing a Santa Claus hat and a beard. Um, if you think about it, it could be a little creepy, but it's, it's sort of the, the nice, genteel Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, but Lovecraft That's is, he's not a terribly gory guy. Is I mean, not at least not in the sense of like that, that gratuitous, like, to the point of it being pornographic gore that you see in sometimes in, in cheap, poorly made horror. Um, he never went down that road. Um, no, no. And it seems like, I mean, and by the way, it's Fatal Mutation uh, is the one that I was. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Now that's almost, I mean, not almost it, that looks like it could be in the uh, vein of HR Geiger. I mean, it's got this like, really disturbing organic, like horror to it that is, yeah, it's gooey, but it's, it's got that it, because it's not based in blood. It's, it's some sort of alien substance. It, it, it has the, the feel of gore, but not the, the, you know, the, sh- the, the shock that makes people, you know, turn off from it. I mean, it's it's scary. It's straight up scary. It's it's very cool that my artwork worked for you. Thank you so much. I mean, and I know my horror. I know my horror and I am a horror expert. Another one that I never realized until just today. I've looked at this card thousands of times. The Wall of Blossoms. Uh-huh. And it wasn't until I was looking at it online that I was like, oh, my goodness. There is a hand in that. Like, yeah, I mean. That and that changed it like that changed everything. And I was like, okay, wow. So that's that's when I really enjoy the magic art is when you can look at it for, you know, a hundred times and then you pick up something. And I just was like, I could have kicked myself. I'm like, wow, that is that is so well done. Like that could have been that could be a poster for a horror movie because you look at it. It looks so tranquil and and, and serene and pretty. And then you're just like, oh. This. uh okay. This, this wall just strangled this person to death. It just kind of grew over it. Um, yeah, where I, I didn't want to do the thing that immediately popped into my head when I got the, the art order for that card, which was a big happy wall of daisies. I didn't, I didn't want that. Fortunately, here in Seattle, we have blackberries and morning glories. And if you if you let them be for a while, they will just engulf your house. Mm-hmm. Any, anything. If you stand in one place too long, morning glories and or blackberries will come along and just fall over you. And, and, then, and then you'll be gone. Um, <laughs> well, the morning that, that glories. My inspiration with the morning glories in particular. because they well, Morning some, glories are the nightshade, right? They're, they're related to like the Daytura. Like they kind of look like trumpets. Is that the ones that you're. They are. They do look like trumpets. I do not know if they're related to Daytura. Um, I think that they are poisonous though. If they're like, there is an element of. I believe um, so. Bindweed. Uh, I believe bindweed is a primitive form of morning glory. Um, Morning glory seeds are, I believe, poisonous slash hallucinogenic. hallucinogenic. Right? I believe people have taken them, mm-hmm. were described hallucinating on them, but that's one of the many, many, many plants you can eat that will poison you as well as give you vision. So, you know, <laughs> let's, let's not take things that are bad for us. No, no. Um, like, Enlightenment doesn't need you to poison yourself and throw up all over everything. No, and Martha Stewart sprays that stuff, so you don't do that as well. And she'll she'll make she makes sure of that. Um, the hand of death was that. Now that one, how can you you can say it's like again? How can you say that you're not uh, just a natural at horror? That one is so horrific, and it's it's just. But it's it's, it's again, it's not gory. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not. I don't want to say classless because that would imply, I'm not saying that all other horror is classless, but there's an element of class to your, to your paintings. I guess if that makes any sense. It's, it's, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad the paintings are working for you and that you're enjoying them. I, I, I guess that I just make the pictures that feel right to me in response to a given art description. And it's really cool when that idea that I develop inside my head goes down on the paper and actually works for other people. That's, that's really awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what would be a card that you did that like, as far as execution to uh, from the, the, from the beginning of it to execution that you, you did it and it was just smooth sailing. It was what you had imagined. It's what you wanted. And it's one that you treasure today. (sighs) Um. It's been so long and life has been so chaotic the last few years that it's hard to throw my head, to throw my thoughts back and feel that kind of confidence. And I would have to say I relate that kind of confidence to the early years of magic when I was a relatively young artist. I mean, 
I was in my 30s, but as a painter and as an illustrator, I was relatively new. Yeah. And I think that being relatively new gives you an incredible sense that you know what you're doing. Whereas as you go along and you start looking at more artwork and trying to improve your own artwork, you don't feel quite that flushed with, with a powerful confidence that you're nailing it. But man, when you, when you are, when you're a young artist, there's just so much confidence in, the, in life. And then as you go on and you learn more, you level up your skills, you may level up the vision that you're trying, your ability to communicate an idea or a story, but you tend to have a slightly more qualified look at your skills. So when I say that, um, one of the cards that I remember very fondly is, oh gosh, what was it? Ah, I've forgotten it, but it was, it was from one of the Urza saga sets, one of the mm -hmm. Urza story arc. And it was a couple of small water fae flying along over a wizard and he was in forced perspective. And while I was, struggling to make that come together, I figured out some things about how tone and value and edge affect a sense of distance. And all things considered, given the, the artist I was at that point, the force perspective is working pretty well. Mm -hmm. And the background flows away and it kind of works. And and I still feel very fondly about that that card, even though even though the art turned up on a card that has never struck anyone as a super valuable card as part of a mechanic, even though it, even though it has no foothold on magic play in the long term, that one particular card illustration. Um, I do feel a bit fondly about it even today, just because of what I learned and how it managed to work, even though I was such a young and dumb artist at the time. So <laughs> yay for breakthroughs. Um, now, like with, um, with what was interesting that I've noticed about your pieces too, is that it for, I'm not sure what reasons why, but you will, you've often done um, several versions of the same card. Like for instance, you did Hungry Mist uh, two times and, uh, I believe that's that's there was another example of um, of some of that going on on obviously you know the lands and whatnot but but for instance like the hungry mist like what brought about you doing two versions of it because it's interesting it's cool because you have sort of this recurring character that you know the mist that's coming up and doing these these creepy things mm -hmm. and um, what what was the the I guess the the impetus behind those assignments and why would you do two cards. Uh, relatively so close together. I am trying to remember. Uh, that was, was that like immediately after Fallen Empires? That was, let's see, the hung, Hungry Mist was, uh, and, and again, I, my ignorance to this is, I mean, I should be ashamed, but at this, this. I it, was I, there and I've forgotten. He, um, well, yeah, but you know, I'm oh, supposed but, to have but, done. But, I'm sorry, go on. Oh, um, I think at that, time that was it was fifth edition in homelands it looks like these these two were done which okay. um was it because was there some sort of thing where then the contracts changed is that what happened or um is that it's not that exciting um i think that both the hungry mists were done for the same set and either i was just assigned both versions because I think that a number of sets, uh, uh, I think that a few sets around Fallen Empires had multiple yeah, illustrations for the same card. I know, I know Fallen Empires had multiple versions of certain card, m multiple illustration, multiple illustrated versions of certain card titles. And I think that in Homelands, there were multiple illustrated versions of various cards also. And I don't remember if I was assigned both versions of Hungry Mist or if the art director 
called me on the phone, <laughs> as we did in the day, and said, I can give you X number of cards. Here are some titles, to which I said, perhaps I would like to do two versions of Hungry Mist. I would like to do this. So I don't know if I was assigned them or if I asked for them, but um, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a deep financial or philosophical thing. It was just, I had two versions of the same card to do, and I wanted to try and do two thematically similar, but also dissimilar versions. And um, I think if there's anything you can take away from that, it's that back in the old days, there was a lot more weird freedom. Um, right, that, okay. That sounds, like a, that sounds like a criticism, and it's not. I think it's just the normal order of evolution of corporate yeah, I don't. Properties. I don't think that sounds like a criticism. I think it just it's. It, I think that anybody who is at least living with like sort of like a modicum of reality would understand that that's that's what happens when things become bigger. Mm -hmm. Then the stakes become higher, and things that you have to sort of like watch yourself. And there isn't the same kind of freedom that say like um, you know, you get when you're doing it like say a small project where mm -hmm. people are not really having to be beholden to shareholders or whatnot. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I think as as a project becomes more valuable, um, the sense of what's safe to do with it, and and uh, yeah, the, what's safe to do with it changes uh, as the audience changes and becomes huge and involves many people and their mothers. Um, yes, I, I I'm, that that was that was. That was snide. Forgive me. Oh, no. I, I, I feel like there is a certain sense that um, when when you're doing a project that nobody sees, you can you can do some hinky stuff. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't, mm -hmm. maybe, um, but you can because nobody's going to see it. Once people start seeing it, you you have a certain responsibility to um, to not be inappropriate for the age group at which the project is targeted. Um, and, uh, wow. I mean, I think I, that's I fair. It. I, I just lost the chain of thought there. I this think it's awesome. fair. Make, and I mean, back to the interesting. it's, it's no, it is, it's, it's totally fine. Like first you, you're being, I mean, don't be so hard on yourself. This is, this is very, I'm very interested. I'm, I'm interested in this conversation. So I, I don't want you to be mean to yourself because it's, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting point of view. And I, I don't want to like, just bring it back to like, uh, I don't want to, you know, say the, oh, the women artists of magic, but it's, it's, it's very, it's very much, um, in, it's very much a, a, a necessity for me to talk to, you know, the women who are involved with these games, because I mean, not, and not just the fact that you're a woman, but you were one of the like first ones ever in the history of the game. And I'd imagine that that has to make you sort of, I guess you have to be on your toes because you have to work in a, in a sort of, you know, in a sort of, but like a man's world where you're, you know, your elements could be challenged. Um, what was that like being one of those early forerunners? Was was there things that you dealt with that you felt like were um, like for your benefit or for or something against you? I mean, I'm just curious because it's historically a fascinating thing to me. Um, you know, as you were talking, I kept coming back to the signing I did uh, in a city not too far from Seattle, over in Bellevue, where a young young person, young uh, boy, kid, guy, I would say a younger teenager of the male persuasion <laughs> came up to our signing table where I was signing with Kaya Folio and um, Margaret Organ Keene, and we're sitting there, and he says, I just like you, I'd like to thank you for for being girls and being here. Aw. And so I thought that was sweet. And um I it also and ever since I've sort of sort of had a sense that when I would do a signing or 
when I would be visible professionally, I was reaching out to the men of gaming who might not have actually realized that people of the female persuasion sometimes like to draw monsters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I'm glad that if I help someone realize, hey, all kinds of people like to like to draw monsters, like to be involved with gaming. That's that's a cool thing. You know, I'm I'm not just a artist. I'm an ambassador for women <laughs> everywhere who like to draw weird shit. Well, uh, you are. I mean, it's it certainly is indeed what you've done. I mean, and and I mean, it's. It, it's tricky because, you know, I, I'd imagine that, that there's people out there who may not even, they see the name Heather Hudson, but they just maybe then assume, like the same way that I assume that in my mind, my I always assumed sometimes that these artists were, artists were way older than they were. Like, I just imagine everybody to be 65, 70 years old. And when, when I find oh, we out- we are now. Uh, but, well, we will be soon enough, sorry. <laughs> but like every artist that's like, I'm just like, well, they have to be like in their seventies if they're, you know, good artists because, and then I'm shocked when somebody is younger than me, but um, I'd imagine that there's times where people didn't even realize that you were indeed uh, a, a, like a woman and, and of the female persuasion of the female uh, persuasion. Yeah. She, her um, it's, it's entirely possible. I would assume I have a sort of, obvious female name um true yeah read the fine print on the bottom of the card which is extremely small these days um but yeah i i i've met people who thought that some of my friends who were female were male because they didn't recognize the name they didn't recognize um the the yeah they didn't they weren't familiar with the name and they didn't realize what it meant as a social marker so so yeah i i don't know i don't know if anyone i don't know that i remember anyone coming up to me and saying wow i didn't know you were a girl but you know many people are smart enough not to lead with that so I, d I don't know how many people were surprised to realize that i i am who i am and look like what i look like which at this point is pretty much somebody's mom um i say cool college professor like you just look like the college professor that if you just don't walk into your class and not know what you're doing because like you will be schooled if you don't know what you're talking about that's the vibe i, I get I try to use my awesome bitch powers for good and not evil, but. Don't we all though, really? I mean, I, I, I know. Hope so. I hope so. I mean, that would be the goal of bitch powers to be used for the greater good. Um, but. Mm -hmm. Like you know, Betty Davis is uh, like the, like she used it so well. Mm -hmm. She was, she was fabulous. Anyway. Now. now <laughs> But the reason why I ask is because I'm going through your older interviews. I had read that there's some interesting things that people ask you when they come up to you. Um, like, for instance, I didn't think I was surprised at this one, but people often ask if Academy Rector is um, a man or a woman. And uh, to me, it was I was just like, oh, this is a lady. It, 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 it is an old lady. It is yeah. an old, old lady. Um, and. I'm going to suggest here that mm -hmm. some of that could be because of how women were presented in fantasy art mm -hmm. um, in, a, in, that, in that time period, very, in, in, that, in the earlier days. Very and Jessica I, Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know my friends who do art for video games have talked in the last 10 years about the dynamic of introducing women characters, characters of color, LGBTQ characters into, into games and into, into, um, into gaming communities as characters and not caricatures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that that's that's a um, I won't say a struggle, but a 
push back and forth that's evolving. And I don't know if it would have evolved that, uh, more smoothly without the internet. Mm. Uh, I don't, the internet is this tremendous factor that can just add a random explosion right, into, right. into any conversation as far as I can tell. But yeah. in many ways it does wonderful things. It does. It's it's capable of like it is capable of great good and great destruction. It's it's a double edged sword for sure. Um, and but what's fascinating about Academy Rector is that you met you did that at a time where things were really pushing against that kind of a representation. Um, and I do know that for a fact, like I talked to Magali Villeneuve about it, and, and there are other female artists that I talked to about it. That there is still a push like to make females uh, have to be a uh, sexy and, and they have to be uh, looking for, they have to be there for the male gaze, so to speak. And to do it at such an early time, I think is, I mean, were you, were you aware of how brave that was? Or was this just like, you were like, this not, is what I imagined. Not and Not a clue. Um, not a clue. <laughs> nice. Not, not a blessed clue. Um, as I said, I, wandered into gaming illustration through hanging out with other artists. I did not have, and while I was familiar with representational art, which in those days was all traditionally painted because that's what we did. Um, a lot of my knowledge of art was from researching and doing design work for theatrical projects. So my, my artistic knowledgeability, my knowledge of other artists sort of came to a big old stop when photography became a source of recording the modern day. When, when, so, so my knowledge of art rolled right up into like 1890s, 1920s. Um, but you mean back then, because your Twitter, your Twitter account has, uh, you, you seem to be very much in the know of, of art. You, you are constantly posting thoughtful things about different artists and, and, and that kind of thing. Well, I, li I like, I like art. Mm -hmm. And as I've, as I got into making art and doing art, I was able to start seeing artwork or finding artwork by people like N.C. Wyeth and uh, Sargent and uh, the Japanese. One of my favorite artists is was uh, Tsukiyaka Yashitashi, who did a book called 36 Ghosts that I'd run into in grad school and just really blew my mind. And I, I just love, what I love about art is the storytelling aspect and, and the way you can put ideas in people's heads. And I, so I was, even as I became active as an illustrator and started seeking out artwork and artists and art instruction, I, tended to aim at older schools that were outside the the gaming fantasy the fantasy gaming niche and there are awesome gamers there are, there are awesome artists in that niche there were back in the day there are brilliant artists there now and but i just wasn't that familiar with the tropes and i think that probably sums it up there were tropes in, in game illustration, and I was completely oblivious to them. I'm like, let's draw an old lady. I bet she'd be cool. Um, and there I was, painting things that were maybe not what people expected me to paint, but they were what felt right to me at the time, and the sketches were okay. So here we go. It, your 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 range is so broad because like for a card like I'm going to butcher the pronouncing it but Fadia Seer um oh, yeah I don't know how it's pronounced either but I know this year yeah. she's beautiful I mean and but you know so you're able to do these 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 very like either they're they're they can be esoteric they can be horror they can be um you know 
they can be representative and they, they you have such a range and i feel like there's not a lot of artists that are able to sort of do something that is very just traditionally beautiful and then also like horrific and the same token it's 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 a skill you have you 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 i mean yes you can hang out with as many artists as you want to but it takes like actual talent to 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 do that so i mean my my hat's off to you. My my question though is um with your people, and I ask this to everybody who do the people, is mm-hmm. there's gotta do you use models or do they come from your brain? Because I I mean I'm fascinated that artists can do either things, but but are there models that you've used for your pieces? I I will always use photo reference when I can get it. Um I mean, why not? I say I have I have taken a lot of photos of my friends to the extent where I now categorize all people that I get to know socially as potential model tropes. For example, my husband is a definite wizard slash giant (laughs) or ogre type. Um, I know numerous wizards uh, and several wonderful crones but <laughs> as, as i get older i need to keep my my pool of friends sort of broad and 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 with with a good range of ages right so, right because because i've gotten to the point where i i i really need to start using more photo reference and I want, I want people's character to come out because, I mean, it's just really interesting sort of sizing people up. It's like, you might be a good paladin. Hmm. <laughs> you don't say anything. You just remember that for later. And yeah. Maybe when, you need, when you need a little help, um, you maybe reach out. Would you mind, would you mind giving me like an hour for a little photo shoot and, and, you know, you, you pay for time and you are very polite and don't do anything that anyone's uncomfortable with. But um, it really is a great help to have actual, actual faces behind to, to draw on. Because, because if I don't use photo reference of some kind, and I don't, I don't trace, but I do, I do look at it. Um, I'm afraid that what happens if, if I don't use photo reference is that all my characters sort of come down to one sort of archetypical character who kind of looks like me because that's the face I can make in a mirror. Right. Okay. And, and that's boring and not very much fun if everyone kind of looks like me. So, so being able to exploit my friends for, for pose reference is a great help. And I, I know I can buy packets of poses from places like Graphit Studios, or I believe Howard Lyons does beautiful, beautiful reference packs of photo reference. And they are beautiful, but I find that the illustrations I enjoy making are people who are doing things and having reactions and have expressions. and. I feel like being able to take photos of people in the, in the pose or making the face or having the reaction is an important part of being able to get that into the artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because you're doing it, you're directing them. Yeah. You're working as a director from the very beginning uh, as from the, from the, the synthesis of it. So that way, I can see what you're saying because if it's a photograph that somebody else has taken, you might not have that, that, that one thing that you were going for that is not there. And, and they, those photos, those photos can be super helpful for, for the way fab, uh, the way silk shimmers in a certain light or, or just, just a beautiful still face is mm-hmm. can be just the right thing. But I feel like, to the extent my illustration works, it's because I'm using it to tell a story, not just make a pretty picture. Yes. And part of 
part of being able to tell a story is is to be able to control what what's there and and not just painting a pretty picture. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like, do you think maybe because of your background in uh, like English that that has that has made its way into your your pieces because there is a strong narrative in the things you do. I think that that very much everything we have been shapes the thing that we put out at the moment. Every, I mean, everything that you've experienced to date is influences the next question you ask or how you edit the film at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and very much my illustration is a series of, I mean, I, 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 when, when I work on an illustration, I talk to the client, I, I try to take in what the client wants. And if what the client wants is a static tableau, I will work with that. But I feel like the strength I have and one of the cool things that I can bring to a project is my desire to figure out the illustration as part of a narrative and as, and as part of a story that is going to be told in the course of the book or the audio play or, or the project or the game. And I mean, and when another thing that I found to be pretty fascinating is um, you went from, you know, obviously you started out with acrylics, then you did oils. Then you sort of, at the beginning, you were reticent to take to digital. And then I read that you now think that digital is your personally, your favorite way to work. <laughs> oh gods. Okay. Here's the story on digital. So I got to a point in my life, I'm getting older, my eyes are not as good as they used to be. And one of my motivations for going to digital was, I'm a slow painter, I could theoretically paint faster in digital. Uh, and if I'm having trouble seeing details, I can blow things up. Yeah. yeah. Yay, blow things up. Um, so a few years ago, my eyes are getting worse, and I go to my to an ophthalmologist, and there I learn that the worst thing I can do is to work digitally. Oh no! It, yeah, it's 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 great. It's like she's telling me, well, I understand it's really hard to avoid computers these days. But if you <laughs> only work for 20 minutes at a time, and then you spend like five or ten minutes focusing elsewhere and you use eye drops every time you take a break. Oh my. Okay. And I'm like, maybe digital isn't the wave of my own particular future. That sucks because you, it really like it was time. It's a time saver. And then all of a sudden you're told by this, you're told actually you're going to have to like do a bunch of things in between this. And, you know, it's just life is a weird fluctuating mess. And sometimes <laughs> life fluctuates and what you thought was important changes. Um, so, so yeah, at that point, I had thought I would be doing a lot of illustration and I would be trying to level up and do more illustration projects, but things changed. And now I'm working on personal projects. I'm selling a lot of, a lot more of my artwork. I'm, I'm doing small pieces, but I'm, I'm, I'm selling, I'm selling more original work and I'm working with a traditional brush again. And, um, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Um, right now, I'm working a lot in watercolors. There, yes. Because, because honestly, the the people I the people I saw who were working that made were doing work I was excited about, and um, the the people who 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 were doing artwork, and I'd look at their work and I'm, wow, that's really cool. That seems like something that it would be, not that I want to copy them, but that there are elements of what they're doing that excite me. And because I'm excited by them, I want to try and 
weave some of that into my own work. And there are people like Omar Ryan. Um, oh, gosh. Um, and now my brain escapes me. Uh, I think Larry McDougall, uh, Alan Lee, people who were using a lot of water. Oh, PJ Lynch, if you've ever seen mm. his work. He's an English fantasy artist, just brilliant. And it seemed like a kind of artwork where people were having a lot of fun and it wasn't photorealistic rendering, but it was very evocative and told stories easily. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm telling to, trying to tell a story, I can, I don't know, there's just different kinds of art lend themselves to different kinds of storytelling. And I feel like maybe watercolor is a good direction for me to go right now. And, you know, I am not a young person and I am not going to be competing for gigs with people who paint digital art beautifully for, for video games. Um, that's, that's not something I need to worry about. I need to figure out what kind of artwork makes sense for me. And for right now that's watercolor, but it certainly won't be uh, digital. Well, I mean, that's, that's a bummer, but you know, at the same time that, that seems like that should be really what every artist should be after is what doing what works for you. Right. Because if you're not being true to whatever your like inspiration is, that's calling you're, you're not going to get the kind of work that you want. Right. Well, yes, but also people need to make a living. Well, yes. And, yeah. and um, I can definitely see how, being the very bestest digital painter you can be is going to make your talents marketable. Right. Okay. Yes. In a way that I don't need to worry about because I'm old, because I don't have 20 K in student debts. Right. Uh, because I'm, I've, I've been around long enough and worked on some properties that people like that I don't have boodles of name recognition, but I'm not in the position of a young person who's popped out of school with a big debt, desperate to make an income. I, I'm, I've been in many ways very lucky in life. So, well, I that's great. Have the privilege of, of trying something new. And that's fantastic. I mean, I think that you, you have to do, I mean, like, you know, somebody with your type of success, it, it, it would almost be, it, will, it would be a waste if you didn't take chances and used the fact that you were not just lucky, but talented, but used those to experiment with different forms. I, 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 I would do it too, if I had the skills, which I don't, but if I did. Come on, you've got to have something that you're working on. Oh, I'm, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, like I, I've gotten, I've been brushing my teeth three times a day now for a long time. I'm good at that. I, uh, I have, I can change my clothes usually. Um, but other than, that, other than that, it's, um, as far as, uh, as far as like the, um, I'm a more of a, um, a, a jack of all trades and a master of none type of person. Um, I, I blame that on, uh, Coca-Cola and ADHD, but. Okay. It's. I, I, I'm sorry, my, my brain is just cut out. Throw out, throw out an idea. Let's let's jump to another concept. Well, um, I want. Okay, so I'm going to ask uh, a couple of weird questions myself, uh, um, because I am genuinely curious. I wanted to know. Well, first off, like, would you? How would you describe your sense of humor uh, as a person? What would you say? Do you like to play maybe like uh, like funny jokes in your art or anything like that? Because this is leading up to something. Um, I think that the illustrations will sometimes have elements of whimsy, which is a loaded word, or um, I don't know. I, I will put I will put a funny thing in the artwork if it makes the art better and if the um, 
and if it if it's appropriate to the illustration and to the game and to what the artwork will be used on. There have been times where I have put things in art which, in retrospect, were ill-advised. Um, perhaps what, not as ill-advised as some, but still, um, there, there, there were definitely things that I thought were fine 20 years ago that, in retrospect, I would do differently today. But I think that's just part of spending 20 years drawing things is, is your, your, your sensibilities change about what is, what is best to, to put in art. What would be some examples of that? I'm curious, like what would be something that, you know, I mean, and I'm not doing this to, to like pull you, break you over the coals because um, th this particular one that I'm talking about, and I, I guess I can just say it, like, I, has anybody ever mentioned Claire Gion Vec to you? Oh, Lordy, yes. Well, the reason why I feel like there might have been sort of a, like a bit of a team effort of something is because the, the flavor text says, at the bottom it says, Faith Shields is hammered out by the blows of unbelievers. And I was like, somebody had to have. I have nothing to do with flavor text. No, I, I understand. I, I understand. But I was okay. just, I thought possibly maybe you guys were doing this for a giggle. And because I, I see sometimes the flavor text, and I know that the artists have nothing to do with it, but they they sometimes are a little cheeky like that. And um, and there was one that actually as an English major, I was completely uh, blown out by the, um, it's, it's not grammatically correct. Like you did... Um, you did the painting of um it was the giant gorilla this is i'm like i'm gonna cut this out because i'm looking it up right now not pongify but um that big angry ape with, with yeah 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 the i want a banana this big thing. yes and yeah. what's funny about um about gorilla titan is that it says like i want banana this big right mm -hmm. everything is in italics except for the this which technically that's not how it should be because if you want to use emphasis the this should be in italics and i was just like well that seems like an odd choice, but, but I, I never, I couldn't be sure. Cause back in the early days, you know, you never know if maybe there was some sort of like, I don't know, just a little like having a giggle thing, but it's, it's great that you have a good sense of humor about it. And I mean, we, we do our best as we can at the time. And if 20 years later, you look back and you say, Hmm, perhaps, perhaps another concept. <laughs> I mean, but, but you can't fly back 20 years and redo it. It, it is what it is. You do your best at the time. It's memorable and it's great. And then, you know, like, and then so one of the other ones that I was fascinated by was that people come up to you with the Hermit Druid card. And, and you, I've read that you heard that people are asking Jason Momoa to sign it. That somebody, somebody said they'd ask Jason Momoa to sign it. Apparently, he very courteously signed it. Um, yeah, it seems odd that that person presumably not knowing what the heck was what the heck he was signing. I, I swear to you, it was not Jason Momoa. It was in fact, my husband who had much longer hair at the time than he does now. Uh, um, yeah. And plus I think in 1998, I don't know if Jason Momoa was an international star. I think he probably was maybe, a, I mean, maybe he's a teenager back then or something like I'm that. I'm a very young person. Yes. Um, yeah, I think it's very easy. This is something, this is something I've heard other artists mention. Mm-hmm that cards, particularly the older cards, get reprinted and players maybe don't realize that they are looking at a, a range of historical time periods. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, yes. Yet that by and large, many people, which is especially the younger players, relate to all of the card art as something that's happening now. Right, right. Artifacts, which is how someone emailed me last Fall to complain that I'd stolen a. Okay, he did not come. He suggested that I had used a picture of his girlfriend. What? Uh, as the model for a, a card called Mariki Re Barrett, which came out in Ice Age. That is an old and card, right? Yeah, it's a very old card. On on uh, on his on his behalf, I will say that he sent a picture of his girlfriend, and she did look very much uh, like. Uh, my character in Mariki, but I think maybe she was LARPing a trope that I had drawn on, which is the beautiful girl who is ominous because she is sort of beautiful at right. the time. 
And um, yeah, I, and I'm sure that if, if he'd looked at the card and seen that it was copyright in like 95, it would have been a great help in calming his mind on this issue. I think I wrote him back saying, thank you very much. He does, your girlfriend is lovely, but unfortunately I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I, I think I just gently pointed out that the card was from some god awfully long period of time ago. Yeah, and it yeah, seems so like also is. too, it's like, is your girlfriend famous or uh, like, I mean. She was, you know, and this is the internet. Everyone is famous for, for five minutes. You know, artwork. They think, <laughs> they imagine like Heather Hudson's like outside the window with a sketch pad, like just. I, 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 the internet is a lovely thing, but, um, and it's made a lot of, a lot of, it's made it possible for people to cir circulate images and for, it's made it possible for me to find 50 pictures of an animal or a bird that 20 years ago, I would have had to go find an old National Geographic. Right, right, and, yeah, yeah. And, and National Geographic is super, but, um, it was a lot harder to find reference, but by the, by the same token, yeah, I can see how if, if I had a picture of someone, if I had taken a picture of someone uh, last week and I saw a picture that looked very similar to that photograph, it would be easy to think, well, I put it on Facebook. Maybe they, maybe they borrowed it. Right, but oh wow, it's... there's hail coming down. Sorry. Oh, it's uh, hailing yeah. where you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really hailing hard. Too. I'm sorry. Seattle, you... Seattle doesn't generally have winters. We just have this misty gray period. Is well, and this year, year we've had. Winter. It's very confusing. Um, is everything okay though? I mean, I I don't want oh, to. Keep... Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, it's fine. It's just I have the window open, so you've got some light on me, and so I'm I'm just easily distracted by. Well, I don't want you to get hailed on. Oh no, I'm not. No, I know. I mean, I I have the curtains drawn. Okay. There is light coming in, but there is glass. I will not be hailed on. It is decently outside. It's just okay. that I'm easily distracted. Um, yeah, I I can see how if if someone is not familiar with how long it takes magic cards to come out, and also <clears throat> hadn't noticed that the card was originally published back in the '90s. It's not unreasonable to wonder, did they see a photo? Did they see that photo that I put online? But um, also, I mean, I was able know, to tell him that, in fact, that was not his girlfriend. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I not I don't want to name I don't call names, but that's like an element of where I'd be like, mm, you know, like, is yeah. this a stable person? Because it would be one thing if they wrote and they said, oh, my gosh, it's amazing how much they look like each other versus you did. I mean, they weren't mean about it, but they were concerned. And I, I, you know, I'm going to respect that. There is, there's no big win in being rude to people. Um, no, and it's no. It's hard for me to say that because I have a naturally smart Alec turn of phrase, which has occasionally gotten me into trouble. But by <laughs> and large, kindness is, is the best bet for going forward smoothly with no fuss. So. I, I mean, I agree, but I will say that I believe that you did base Pongify off of me and, I, <laughs> and I'm going to have my lawyers call because my lawyers I, will be contacting you. They will. Um, my team will be contacting you because um, it's uncanny. And frankly, I, I, that was very rude of you to do that. It was, um, the whole question of where do, where do people get their reference is a bit fraught, um, in as much as I remember back in, I believe, the late 90s or early 2000s, it was pointed out that some art in various card games, and I don't remember any particular images from Magic, so I won't say that Magic artists were doing it, but there were an awful lot of beautiful women characters that could be easily traced back to Victoria's Secret catalog <laughs> models to the point where there was a clause in my contracts for a while. You will take your own reference and you will get waivers from the from the models. Right. And you don't have to show us the waivers, but you do have to have them ready in case we ask to see them. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, the, the hunt for reference is a reasonable concern. However, in that case, 
his girlfriend was not even born when that card came out. No. And so he could, he could, he could, he could be calm and happy and know that I had not in fact ripped off his girlfriend's pictures. Right. His very yeah. famous, very well-known girlfriend. Who, yes. I, I, and, you know, you just have to have the right face, honestly, but it's, it's yeah. not good to, to swipe photos off the internet and illustrate from them. You really don't do that. That's very bad and dangerous. Yeah. It's sort of rude, isn't it? Don't it's, do that, children. Yes. And, um, because, um, you know, because again, Pongify, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's unfortunate, but I won't give you- <laughs> It's I a coincidence. You it's, honestly- I think, you're not, I think not. I mean, it's it's clearly me. I mean, right down to the pickaxe that got thrown down angrily. I mean, that's that's just me all over. But um, but to, I won't keep you for much longer, but I will say, I wanna ask you the, well, the obvious question is with the, the amount of older artists that are returning to magic the, the, from the earlier days and the secret layers and all that stuff. Is there any chance that we could see you do a return? Because I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but you're reprinted. You have to be one of the most reprinted artists in the game. I mean, your, your Baron Moores and your, in your um, uh, lone sandbars, those kind of, I mean, it's countless numbers of times and you're, you're on arena. Like you are, actively played on in, in the digital format so you're you're going to be noticed even more by modern players uh is there any chance that you could do it is there any sort of there there is always a chance it's not really up to me it's about it's about art directors and whoever works with art directors to decide these things reaching out to me and um I don't want to get emotionally involved in hoping for it, but it would be certainly very nice to be involved in some kind of magic project down the road. Well, I only ask because I will do everything that I can to make it known that I mean, because because I not I'm not just doing you know this this all the things aside. I am a fan first, mm -hmm. and I love the notion of bringing back people who were there at the beginning. I mean, your, 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 your work in the, the gathering book, um, it, it's, it sort of just says to me that every artist that was starting out needs a chance to, to shine. And there are uh, so many with the secret layers that come up, basically what that is, is that it's a completely like separate thing from any set. It's can be whatever type of art style it wants to be. It's themed around different things. And they have been lately doing them around um, themed around, uh, you know, artists like Mark Tadeen and, and things like that. So um I feel like this is a great time for uh, for artists to get their recognition because I mean, who doesn't love a good like callback? It's just, it feels good, you know? Well, I hope, uh, I hope you get a chance to see some, some more cards for me down the road. I do too. I do too. And I mean, like, I, I feel like it will happen because again, you're, you're, you're reprinted so much. Like you're, it, it, I mean, you will, obviously you must know, cause you, I'm sure you still get the artist perks, right? I, I do get the artist proofs and I do feel like if society does collapse, I will be able to, to <laughs> burn my barren moors and uh, tranquil oh thickets. God, tranquil thickets for heat because mm -hmm. oh Lordy, there's a lot of them. Um, I mean, it's amazing. It's, 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 it's nice to see that the things are still being enjoyed because by and large magic cards, apart from the few that become powerful as parts of mechanics they're right. like autumn leaves or butterflies they die at the end of the year and are replaced by by the next generation so the thought right. that anything i did 20 or 15 or 25 years ago now is still sparking I mean, joy that's cool they released on arena that people have had like exclusive like your your mountain like the heather hudson mountains were like a special edition buy it only you can't get it unless you pay for it um thing so the 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 uh, the interest is there i i think well we'll see what happens i i and remember if i've already done it i can't tell you because of client um, i know i know NPC. What's the thing? I'm getting confused with the NDA. 
NDAs, that's it. I was trying to say non-player characters, which was something completely different. I mean, I, well, you know, I, it's um, it's something that I would love to see because again, I, I, I just say this, like as a new player, your stuff rings the bell. I'm like, I know that bear token. It was reprinted in Modern Horizons. I know that you are reprinted in um, the, uh, the even the Fadia Seer is, is now part of a digital only release on Arena. It's, it's very That's, cool. But I'm really glad that Faida's and that's just my guess at at uh, her name. I'm glad that the seer is being reprinted because I did did think that artwork turned out well, and I'm glad if she can if she can survive a little longer as an image as part of Magic's universe. That's really awesome. I'm really oh, glad she, to hear that she's being being a part of people's games now. Yes, she is, and and I mean, and even you're in all of us. You're popping up in the mystery boosters too with your fungisaur and your spike feeder, like. There's they're being reprinted as foils. It's cool. It's it's so. I mean, I think that I I would I would be, I would be I'm gunning for it, and I think that it's something that should happen for sure. Well, cross your fingers, and we'll see what happens next. I will cross my fingers that look like the the monkey paw that is Pongify. Absolutely. I'm just I'm sorry. I can't I can't forgive you for that, Heather. I mean. Oh really. gosh. I'll tell you a funny story if, yes. if we can walk away from it after we that. We may, we may walk away, yes. Okay, I got, I got the card description for Pongify and I didn't realize that this was serious business. <laughs> and my first pencil sketch for the card was of an orangutan sitting on its bottom, looking very goofy with the armor and such, but it was not a scary monkey. And I turned it in because I assumed this was a humorous concept being turned into a monkey. And I got, yeah. I got yeah. no back. And, Try again. This is serious. So, so that was the second draft. That that was the serious business Pongify monkey. The 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 first draft was a bit goofier. Well, I mean, Pongify doesn't really bring to mind like like it's not a word I'd feel like you'd use in like a, you know maybe like a church service or. Like a funeral. And it's, it's, and I guess there's some part of me that it's because turning someone into a monkey is something <laughs> that happens in one of the Terry Pratchett books. Yes, yes. Uh, at the end of, I think, Color of Magic, there's that ripple of magic that goes throughout the world. And one of the things it does is turn the librarian at Unseen University into a monkey, into, into, into a... Um, into an orangutan. Uh, so, so yeah, so I associate that with, with, with humor. I did not think that turning someone into a monkey was serious business, but in fact it was. Um, <laughs> Very, so, yes. So the points to ponder there. Um, <laughs> if, if, I do, if it does look like you, it is a very serious monkey, but it I, honestly, I, I am a serious monkey, but. Well, then, really, are we all serious monkeys in some way? I think so, yes, I think okay. so. Okay, it's, we can you know, now. Yes, and orangutans of two. We can we can oh, all be, yeah. you know. But um uh that that is all I have for you today. I thank you so much for taking the time to do this. It's been a, a, an absolute pleasure. Well, thank you very much for inviting me, and I hope it turns out well and gets you many happy clicks. I I I'm happy clicked already, so it's it's whatever Yay. happy clicks is just that's just ephemera. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. you have a good one. You too. Heather was a blast to talk to, and you have not even heard one of my favorite parts of the interview. Unless, of course, you become one of our patrons, because Concepts and Legends is officially on Patreon, where you can watch unaired and occasionally riotously ribald segments from each new artist interview. And that is one of the many wonderful rewards that is offered. And a special shout out to Python Kitty for joining. I actually had a Python puppy when I was in college. We used to laugh at how much he would chase his tail until we realized that he was trying to eat it. And then it was like a little less funny, but it was, it was still pretty funny. And you know what else is funny? The bonus interview questions with Heather. So sign up, strap in, and have a good laugh while supporting the show. It's like killing two birds with one stone, only much less grim. Do you think anyone has ever killed one bird with a stone, let alone two? I'll have Wikipedia that later when I get home. Oh my god, a nickel!
拜拜。